My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this continuous recording part 3 with Multicine, Continuous Recording Auto Trigger, Firmware Order Recording, and Image Range Tutorial. We will cover using Continuous Recording combined with the Multicine, Continuous Recording Auto Trigger, Firmware Order Recording, and Image Range or Trigger Delay features. Continuous Recording can be used in a variety of ways to automatically record a Cine into the camera's memory, then immediately edit and save that Cine to a user-specified location of an attached hard drive without any user intervention by providing a soft or hard trigger to the camera. Once the save process completes, the camera will automatically be placed back into the recording mode to repeat the process until the continuous recording feature is disabled by the end user. In subsequent continuous recording tutorials, we will cover other ways continuous recording can be used. In this tutorial, I want the camera to trigger itself so that it samples an event that is less than two seconds in duration, approximately every 30 seconds. To do this, not only do I need to use the continuous recording feature, but I also need to use the partitions or multi-cine feature covered in the multi-cine and PCC tutorial, the image range feature covered in the capturing your first cine tutorial, and the continuous recording auto trigger and firmware order recording features, which we will cover later in this tutorial. Before we start, let's quickly review where we're at. For this tutorial, I will be using the Miro Lab 310 Cam 3 camera with a resolution of 768 by 480 at a sample rate of 2000 frames per second. The first thing that I need to do is repartition the camera's circular buffer. This will allow the camera to capture image data to the memory partitions without having to wait for the camera to complete the saving process of one cine before it can start capturing to the next partition. I'll do this just like we did in the multi-cine and PCC tutorial. Under the camera setting selector, I'll select the number of partitions I want from the partitions pull down selection list. For this tutorial, I'm going to segment the camera memory into four segments. When the changing partitions warning message appears, I'll click the OK button. Now I'll close the camera setting selector. The next step is to enter the number of post trigger frames required to produce the 30 second trigger delay I want between each take. Since we are recording at 2000 frames per second and we need approximately a 30 second trigger delay, if I multiply 2000 frames per second times 30 seconds, the result is equal to 60,000 frames per second. The result of this calculation is the number of images I need to enter into the last field to produce the trigger delay required. I'll now copy these cine settings to all four partitions by clicking the set all button. When the copy cine preview parameters over all other cines in this cam and the parameters copy to all cines confirmation windows appear, I'll click the OK buttons in each. Now I'll select cine partition 1 from the CINE pull down selection list to verify that the CINE settings have been copied. And verify the correct delay has been calculated. As you can see here, PCC tells me that the present duration is 2.849 seconds and the delay is 27.152 seconds. If I add these two durations together, the result is a trigger delay of 30.001 seconds, exactly what I'm looking for. I'm also going to quickly select a couple of other partitions just to show that all the cine partitions were set to the same settings when the set all button was selected. As you can see, all the partitions are set with the identical settings. With all the partitions set with identical parameters, I'm going to go back to the preview cine for just a bit. Now I'm ready to define the continuous recording parameters. I'll start by opening the continuous recording selector, if it's not already open, and scroll down 
so I can see all the continuous recording options. Just as I did in the first two continuous recording tutorials, I need to click on the Browse button and navigate to the folder the CINEs are to be stored into. In this case, the C colon program files Phantom CINEs tutorial CINEs folder in the Save CINE dialog window. Next, I need to assign the file name. So I'll enter CR Auto at 4, where CR Auto will be the root name for each of the CINE files. The at sign is the special naming character I need to use to name multiple CINE files, and the 4 is the number of digits that will be appended to the root name. I'll leave the file format at CINE RAW. Now I need to specify the range of images I want the camera to save. Since we don't need to save the full range of images, I'm going to select a user defined option from the range pull down selection list and specify the range of images I want the camera to save. You can think of this range of images to save as the mark in and mark out points of the save cine. Let me go back to the image range and trigger position area for a moment so I can point out the image range that will be stored in the camera's circular memory buffer. Notice that the range of images is from image number 54,304 to image number 60,000. Since the event is going to be less than two seconds in duration, I'm going to tell the camera to start saving the cine with the first two seconds of image data stored in the circular buffer of the camera, just to build in some buffering time. To do this, I need to save a total of 4,000 frames, 2,000 frames per second times 2 seconds of duration. What this means is, when I define the image range, I need to enter the first image to store in the camera's memory buffer, image number 54,304, and the last image to save, image number 58,304. How did I determine the last image number? I added the total number of images I needed to save for the two seconds duration, a total of 4,000 images, to the first image being saved, image number 54,304, which tells me the last image I need to save is image number 58,304. So let's go back to the Save Cine dialog window and enter the image numbers or range options to save. I'll enter image number 54,304 in the first image to save field and image number 58,304 in the last image to save field. If there were any other save options I wanted to apply I would do so but I'm going to leave them as is. Then click the save button. Notice the software displays where the CINE will be saved and the range of images that will be saved in those files. It also displays a save count, the number of CINEs that were saved using the continuous recording feature during this session, and an error count, the number of CINEs that could not be saved during the present session. If an error occurred, an error log would be created that could be viewed. Okay, we're almost ready, just a couple more steps. Since I don't want the camera to wait for it to finish saving the CINE before it can start recording the next CINE, I'll enable the firmware order recording feature. I also need to enable the continuous recording auto trigger feature, not to be confused with the image based auto trigger feature. This feature, when enabled, instructs the camera to automatically trigger itself immediately after it finishes capturing the previous CINE. And if I wanted to, I could accelerate the CINE save process by enabling the minimal GUI refresh option. This option disables the save progress indicator during the save CINE procedure. I'm going to leave this disabled for this tutorial. Now I'm ready to have the camera automatically capture, edit, and save CINEs to our C colon program files Phantom CINEs tutorial CINEs folder. While all this is happening, I'm going to point out a few things so you can see what's happening. Okay, let's start the process by enabling continuous recording. The first thing I want you to notice is the camera has been placed into the recording mode. Both the capture and trigger buttons are disabled and the trigger position buffer fills with post trigger frames.
Once the camera finishes recording a CINE, the Save CINE message and Save Progress indicators are displayed, and the CINE number changes to the next available partition. Unlike before, the camera doesn't write sequentially to partitions 1 through 10, then start over once again. The camera looks for and uses the next available partition to write image data into. Once the image data within a partition has been saved, the camera erases the image data in that partition to free it up for reuse. This is because I enabled the firmware order recording option. Otherwise, the camera would write its image data into partition 1, then 2, and so on. And when partition 10 is filled, the camera would return to the live or preview mode until the end user instructed the camera to reuse a particular partition. Now I'll stop the continuous recording auto trigger process by unchecking the active button and clicking the yes button in the are you sure you want to cancel confirmation window. Even though we stopped the continuous recording process. Now let's look at a few of the cines I just captured by clicking the open file toolbar button and navigate to the folder the files are saved in. Then highlight the files I want to open and click the open button. Let's click on the first CINE we open. Then in the play control panel open the CINE info selector. And scroll down so both the saved range and recorded range are displayed. Notice the camera saved only the image range I specified out of all the CINE images it captured. Now I'm going to scroll down so you can see the trigger time information. The software shows us the date and time the CINE was captured in hours, minutes, seconds, down to the nanoseconds. I want you to keep an eye on the seconds field. When I go to the next CINE, notice this CINE was captured 30 seconds later and 30 seconds later for the next one. I can use the video control buttons to review our CINE and if I needed to I can even re-edit the CINE just as we did in the reviewing your first CINE, editing your first CINE and saving your first CINE tutorials. Before I end this tutorial I want to go back to the live panel and disable the continuous recording auto trigger and firmware order recording features and reset the camera back to one partition. So that's how we can use the continuous recording feature to have the camera automatically trigger itself at specified time intervals using the multi cine image range, firmware order recording, and continuous recording auto trigger features. For in-depth Phantom Operations, Vision Research offers Phantom Operations certification training. Please visit our training webpage at www.phantomhighspeed.com Service Support Training. Or contact your local sales representative who can be found on our website under the Contact Us pull-down selection list for more information about our training sessions or for phantom cameras in general.